welcome to the fifth of our Selected For You webinars. Uh, this is a series of webinars we've been running based on content brokers have, have told us is important to them and brought to you by experts who can help you with these specific areas. So it's the fifth one. The first one was mental health. The second one was coaching. The third one was training and competency. The fourth one was sales. And today is about um, the power of LinkedIn for lead generation. You can access any of the recordings. Um, so do please talk to your account manager about how you access those. But today our experts are factor three. Um, for those of you who have worked with Ecclesiastical for a while, you may remember factor three as, as people that we've worked with before. And we were talking a moment ago and we think it's, it's probably about four years uh, that we've been working together on social selling as amongst other things. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Victoria and Laura from Factor 3 to take you through this session. But there is one more thing that they're both thinking he hasn't said <laughs> the key thing. Um, this is a practical guide, so we do want you to have LinkedIn open um, either on your desktop, but probably preferably on your smart device because we want to give you some practical tips on how to use LinkedIn. So I will now hand over to Victoria and Laura. Good morning. Hello. Um, you may, uh, if you attended any of the masterclasses a few years ago or have watched any of the videos um, or uh, been part of the social club, you remember may remember Laura, Hi. our digital marketing uh, expert, and she's actually going to be the person that's taking you through our presentation today. So um, I will. we've got a lot to get through, <laughs> so um, I shall let her kind of crack on. Thank you. Um, so yes, today we're going to be having a chat through uh, the power of LinkedIn for, for lead generation. Um, and should I just get through with it? Yeah. Now? So in terms of what we're going to be going through today, uh, we're going to have a quick chat on sort of why LinkedIn and especially for, for you guys, for the brokers, um, and why it's a really important channel for, for you to be on. Um, as Chris has said, we're going to make this quite a, a practical session. Um, so we're going to be going through some tips to creating your kind of all star profile and, and making sure your profile is, is as up to date as, as possible. We're then going to have a quick look at how to connect with your customers, how to send out those invitations, how to make sure you're following the right people. Um, and then we'll finally then go on to, to what to actually post and then how to make those habits stick. So how to make sure that you make social as part and, and LinkedIn management as, as part of your your day to day. So why LinkedIn? Many businesses are under the impression that they need to be on all of the different channels, um, all the different social channels for it to be effective. Um, but what they tend to do is spread themselves a little bit too thin um, and then try and do each one, but but not that well. So what we always suggest is choosing sort of one channel um, and really making sure that we are uh, kind of optimizing that one um, as much as possible. And choosing that right channel um, is all about how where your audience is and um, the types of audiences that you're trying to target and also what your kind of brand positioning is and, and what you're trying to look at and, and achieve with that. LinkedIn's brand mission is really simple and it is to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. And this is why we'd always recommend LinkedIn as the first port of call for um, any brokers in that it's a very a professional space. Um, it's very much in that kind of business to business. Um, it's where your peers are, it's where your target audience is, it's where your customers can be. Um, so it's a really good space to make sure that, that you are visible um, and the, the points that we'll go through today will just make sure that you're, you're there, your content is being seen and, and you're starting to make those really valuable connections. Many people just see LinkedIn as uh, an online CV. Um, it is much, much more than that. Um, it's a lot more personal than, say, just sending out a, an email, sending out a mail out. And it can really kind of play into that long term mission of creating really valuable connections with potential customers, potential partners um, and making sure that you've kind of got that that um, real kind of foundation before you start moving into to having those, those business um, connections with them. It can be a really good one stop shop for brand awareness against your wider network. So really getting your name out there. And also it can just bridge that gap so it can make sure that you're in front of those peers, in front of those connections um, and really highlighting those those opportunities going forward. So especially for brokers, um, we've got here is some just some benefits to to brokers of of using LinkedIn in particular. So 
it can humanize your brand and actually put a bit of a face to to your name and, and kind of give you that opportunity to really make your personality shine through um, in terms of those kind of reaching out to to your target audience. It can establish you and your business as thought leaders, um, making sure that you are experts in your field and really kind of highlighting that and, and showing your expertise. It can help increase customer interaction, so it gives you a few more points to be able to talk to customers. Um, like I said, we're going to talk a lot today about kind of creating those connections um, and making sure that we're kind of really um, honing in on those and, and nurturing those um, over time. It can help you attract top talent. So um, if you are looking for um, new members of the team, then um, being really active on LinkedIn and, and being able to show um, that you kind of are, are definite experts and kind of top of your field will really help attract those, those top talents. And also it can help you discover new audiences. Um, so it can really help in terms of reaching those people that you may not come across in your kind of day to day. Um, it might be that you don't have their contact details, but we can find them on LinkedIn um, and really kind of have that that connection with them. Um, and it can help you kind of grow that audience and, and grow your your networking going forward. So as we said, we're going to give a few kind of practical tips on uh, on basically kind of creating your your all star LinkedIn profile. Um, your profile is one of the most important parts of of LinkedIn, um, and we're going to go through a few steps just to make sure that that is um, as optimized as possible um, and as clear and really reflects you um, and your business, but um, also yourselves as as kind of personal brokers as well. Um, and the top tips that we will go through. So the first one is headshots and we always start with this because this is one of the first things that people see um, when someone is either visiting your profile it's alongside every single um, post that you will ever make it will also appear when you uh, kind of suggest to connect to somebody um, and it's often overlooked um, we've seen lots of users that still have profile pictures of uh, when they're graduating um, so <laughs> it's always really important to make sure that they are up to date um, and that you actually put some consideration into, into how you want to be perceived. Um, it could be that they don't, the people that you're connecting with or people who see your profile don't actually um, sort of have never actually met you in person. So it's just making sure that that kind of first port call um, is exactly kind of how you how you want to be perceived within the industry. So when choosing your headshot, um, make sure that it's professional. So think sort of not on holiday, not holding your glass of wine, but actually that it really reflects you and your brand and the sort of um, the the um, the, uh, the bit that you want to get across. So how do you want to make sure that you're you're being reflected? So it could be that there's no harm at all in it being a little bit fun, um, but just make sure that it does reflect you, your brand, and your and your brokerage. Um, and the, the, the um, image that you want to portray throughout that. But a really important part that I think is quite often overlooked is that kind of first port of call as, as someone that lands on, on your profile. So within your LinkedIn profile, there are lots of different aspects. Um, so anything from there's uh, about summaries and, and bios and headlines, which we'll come on to um, in a little bit, but also your education, your work experience, any awards that you've um, won as well. And um, it does sound like a little bit of work, but it's always really good to keep all of this as up to date as possible. So making sure that every single section is filled out every time you if you do sort of move jobs, you have new roles, you work on new projects. Everything is kind of within that um, within your profile and, and as up to date as, as possible. I've put in here as well, always using some keywords within your profile. So keywords and having the right terms throughout your profile will mean that somebody who's searching for somebody like you um, are more likely to find your profile. So including things like the types of insurance you offer, what your role actually entails, the sorts of industries that you work in, um, basically as much detail as possible. We'll make sure and we'll come on to how people and how we can search for those people um, in a little bit uh, more detail slightly later on. Um, but it will just mean that um, any of those kind of key terms that you've got within your profile and within all these different sections um, will make sure that you're you're as searchable as possible. As always with this, though, do allow your personality to come through. So there's nothing worse than sort of landing on on somebody's profile and it's very much kind of tick boxes um, and that you can't really tell kind of what what they're like, what it'd be like to actually work with them. 
um, what they are um, like within within business and their their opinions on things as well. So always do allow your personality to come through um, at all times um, throughout any of the kind of copy and, and pieces that you put throughout your profile. So as I said, we're going to go through into in a couple of um, uh, in a bit more detail some of the um, kind of aspects of that profile. Um, it's important to note that once you've updated your work experience with your current role, um, your personal profile will also be linked to your company page. Thank you, Chris, for allowing us to use yours as, <laughs> as an example. Um, so as soon as you um, do have your, your current job role on there, um, it is linked to your, your brand and your business. So it's always good to consider um, making sure that your LinkedIn activity really reflects well on, on your business. Um, and is it the type of messaging? Is it the type of um, uh, kind of image that, that your business does want to want to portray? Including any sort of branded cover images or profile pictures, again, just means anybody that does land on your profile can quickly see who you work for, who you work with. Um, so it is a really good way of sort of making sure that we are um, kind of pushing forward and, and really showing off. Um, who we're working for and who we're working with. Chris has a great profile picture. So, um, so just some top tips on making sure that we are representing you and your business throughout any of your, your LinkedIn activity. So if your company does have a social media policy, um, always make sure you've read and, and you've understood that any questions, um, I'd always go back to them before you start kind of diving into using uh, LinkedIn. Ensuring that all sources of content are rep uh, are um, reputable. So making sure that if you do share um, an article, you do share anything, you are having a look at who's written that in the first place. Um, making sure that again that kind of fits in with your your social policy. Um, if your company doesn't have a social policy, it's always worth having um, asking, um, having a look at what your company LinkedIn profile does as well, um, and just making sure that you are kind of have that alignment with um, what, what they're trying to achieve. So always make sure you maintain your profiles. Again, making as we've sort of said, making sure that all of those different sections are as up to date as possible. Um, and we'll really make sure that we're reflecting that brand in, in a really strong way. Consider what your profile says about you. Um, this again will reflect on reflect on the brand and, and your business that you that you work for. So always make sure that it shows you in the best light as possible. Um, but also that, like I said, kind of your profile, your personality does come through so out throughout. Supporting your colleagues and supporting your business as well. So if um, if on your company page they're sharing lots of updates make sure you support that make sure that you um, are kind of engaging with your um, your branded uh, content as well um, and any colleagues as well making sure that you're always connected to them uh, sharing any wins that they've had making sure that you're kind of um, mentioning those in your, them in your posts as well will really help to kind of bring that really succinct message across um, and really have show kind of your brokerage in, in the best light um, and as always, kind of always consider your, your tone of voice and your language that you use. So again, just making sure that it, it fully aligns with um, you and your business and, and that image that you, you do want to portray. So one of the first things that people see when they get to your um, profile, um, and this is usually kind of alongside um, your profile picture, is your headline. So this is one of the most visual um, and visible sections of your profile. So um, not only is it the first thing on your page, but it also um, can come up into a news feed and also get shown in the people you know um, suggestions. Um, your LinkedIn headline is, is really key to making that really positive first impression and explaining exactly what you can bring to the table. By default, LinkedIn will put your headline as your current job title and your current, um, your current uh, company. However, there's plenty of scope to add additional detail, additional keywords that can really help you stand out and show up in more search results. So I've put here a couple of examples of brokers that are doing that really well and using that headline to um, the, uh, their, their advantage. So, for example, you've got insurance brokers helping SMEs, property owners, contractors and individual with all their insurance needs. So you know exactly what industries they're looking at 
what industries they can help you with and if that is is um, tailored to you. So again, it just put, make sure that um, you're really positioning yourself um, with those kind of target audiences. And it really shows that kind of um, that first instance of, of what people are looking at. Again, you can put some kind of USPs in there. So helping you arrange your insurance and protecting your business. It's how you can help your customers, how you can help any potential clients or customers that are, that are finding your profile on LinkedIn. But make sure that you do kind of um, overwrite that, that first initial um, default from LinkedIn um, and make sure you've got those, those keywords and those key terms within that. The second section is um, a bio. Um, more often called a profile summary and this is a slightly longer section of your profile um, this gives you up to 2000 words um, to explain who you are and what you do so this only appears once you um, actually land on somebody's profile um, but it can again be a really good opportunity to make sure that you're getting across exactly what you do who you can help um, and what what you can do to to help them and kind of help them with their in, insurance needs. So again, always making sure that we're including those keywords and those key phrases. So what types of insurance you help with, who you can help, um, and any of those kind of target keywords and key terms, which we'll come on to uh, in a little bit more detail later on. Making sure you've got a call to action in there. So if there is a way that somebody can contact you, um, whether or not that be an email address or a phone number, making sure that they know exactly how to how to get in touch with you if they like what they see. And also create sort of, um, and I'll come on to the next slide is, is a, um, a, a structure that you can follow for these for these bios, but create a problem solving or solutions focused bio will really help define what you do, how you can help that target audience and how you and your experience can really help solve these problems for them. So uh, a structure that we always say is a really good good to follow is a hook. So to start with a hook, um, which is basically a really strong opener, introducing yourself, your role, your company. When somebody first lands on your profile, they will see the first sort of three lines and then there will be an option to read more. So you really need to make sure that we get people's attention with that, that strong opener in, in that first section. After that, we can start to go a bit more detail about telling the reader what you do, what you offer, um, the industries that you, that you work in. It's always good if you can to then showcase what you're good at and how your expertise has delivered results. So is there a client um, testimonial that you can put in there? Is there a, an example of um, a project that you've worked on, a client that you've helped that has really helped deliver those results that you've, you've said that you've done? So a little bit of that sort of social proof as well. And then finally, as I said, let them know how to get in touch with you so um, that you can quite easily miss kind of LinkedIn connections and things as well. So if you can put an email address or a phone number in there as well, um, it will just really help make sure that, that they can contact you um, if they need to. So as we said, we're going to make this an interactive session. So I'm going to make you do a little bit of work. Um, what we'd like you to do is, is have a look at your current bio, your current summary and highlight those ways that you think you can improve that and start by trying to rewrite that hook. So rewrite that first couple of lines to really make sure that you've got that, um, you grab someone's attention. Um, we'll give you a couple of minutes. So hopefully you've all got LinkedIn open either on kind of phones or, or desktops. But we'll give you a few minutes to, to have a quick look through that one. And I'll go back to the slide before. So you've got that as your, your um, kind of structure to, to follow through. Thank you, Laura. Just as everybody sort of starts to open up their app, there, there was a question in the chat and um, and that came from from Ben on, I think, your earlier slide about mm -hmm. um, the job title and kind of what you do and how you do it. Yeah. And it was whether or not that goes in the additional name section or somewhere else. So I think it was the slide before this one. Um, this one? One more back, actually. Yeah. That one. Yeah. yeah. Where, where uh, would you put that? So at the moment, um, so you'll have your name, which always comes up, and then just underneath that, there's um, it's, it's called a LinkedIn headline. Um, so if you go onto your app or edit your profile, um, it'll be your headline in there. At the moment, it will say default to um, job title and company. 
um, but you can then go to, to to rewrite that one as well. So it's just it's a bit that sits just underneath your name on your profile. So you, you I would have sort of Laura Morris, and then it's the bit that sits just underneath that. Great, you've answered that query. So thank you there. No worries. I'll go back to this one. I'll just give you a couple more minutes. I think that's the thing with with updating profiles. I think um, it's very easy to 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 do it once when you first kind of set up LinkedIn and then and then not really look at it again. So it's always good to every couple of months is just really go in and, and check that everything is up to date. Is there any other information that you can put in there? Um, and making sure that your yeah your profile is is a true reflection of you at at the moment and at that time. If we move on, hopefully everybody has had a bit of a think about that that hook and, and how you can really kind of optimise that that summary and, and that bio. Um, I wanted to put this in here and, and creator mode is um, basically a way of taking your LinkedIn profile to the next level. Um, it is a profile setting that can help you grow and reach your influence on LinkedIn. So it gives you a couple of different options within your um, within your profile. Um, and the, the screenshot on the left hand side here kind of shows what, what that would then look like um, if you enabled creator mode. Um, so creator mode is great if you're you're pushing out a lot of content, which again we'll kind of come on to um, in a few minutes. Um, but rather than having a connect button, you then have a follow button. And it also displays topics um, that you post about using hashtags. So for example, you could put in there things like insurance news, insurance updates. Um, and it really just shows that um, you you are that expert in your field. Um, and it also highlights any original content that you'll put in there as well. So any posts that you create will go into that sort of featured section on, on that left hand side um, and it will show all of your activity. So this is just an option that you can kind of toggle on and off um, within your, your LinkedIn profile. But if you are um, creating a lot of content and pushing out a lot of original content, then again, it just makes sure that we are kind of increasing that reach um, and increasing their influence and, and really kind of pushing you and, and, and positioning you as that that thought leader within the, the insurance space. Recommendations are a really great way of um, having that sort of social proof and basically kind of backing up everything that you've said in your profile so far. Um, they're really strong signal to any potential customers, to any potential clients that you are good at what you do. And it doesn't just come from from you, which is what we call this sort of social proof um, in, in making sure that it's, it's not just you saying that, that you can deal with these things. Um, you can ask people for recommendations from from anybody. So think about clients that you've had a really successful job with. Um, think about any um, colleagues, for example, as well. Um, again, are really good ways of uh, of getting some strong uh, recommendations in there. Um, we'd always um, rec uh, suggest requesting um, as many recommendations as possible um, and offer to give a recommendation in, in return will always mean that you um, are, have a better chance of receiving it because it's because everybody would like one uh, a couple on the, on their profile. Um, there are also endorsements and skills, but basically it was always good just to ask for these and just say it was really good making, um, I've got an example on the next page actually, there we go. Um, it's really good to kind of highlight exactly what you would like within that, that recommendation. So for example, um, hopefully you can see on the right hand side, um, you can include a personalised message when you do reach out for a recommendation. So I could say, for example, I really enjoyed working with you and I really value your insight and feedback. I'd love it if you could write me a quick recommendation that highlights the skills that we've worked on. I'd be more than happy to write a recommendation in return. Um, we tend to find, as I said, that if you do suggest that you will write one in return, um, then you're more likely to, to get them. And again, these are always appearing on your profile. Um, and again, just a really good way of kind of re cementing, um, cementing your place and, and your position um, and, and how good you are. I'm sure you all are at your at your roles. So we've gone through um, and spoken a lot about kind of making sure that your your profile is up to date um, and you've kind of got that all star all singing profile. And I'm, I'm conscious that I've gone through that relatively quickly. But um, as we said, all of these slides will be available afterwards. But how do we ensure that your profile is getting seen by the right people? Um, and how do we make sure that we are kind of creating those contacts and those connections with the people that that really matter to you and can help you grow your business and help kind of generate those those leads? 
So LinkedIn has a really great search functionality to be able to find those people. Um, and it's a really good tool to help find current and also so potential customers, but also making sure that you're always connected to your, your current customers. There are lots of different options with how you can search. So you can search by company, location, industry size, size of company, also who else they're connected to. So if they are connected to um, a colleague of yours, then again, you can kind of look, have a look at, at who they are connected to um, and, and start kind of making your, your own connections. We'd always suggest that before you start and begin your search, identify those key characteristics of people that you would like to be connected with. So is there a potential um, customers who are in a specific industry that you want to make sure that you are kind of connected to and, and kind of create those connections? Think about people that you've met at networking events, possible partners, referrers, insurance companies themselves. Um, you can also kind of narrow that down by um, current companies you can see on the right hand side there so you can start to have a look at I know that I want to start connecting with more people from ecclesiastical for example and you can start to have a look at, at who there is so always use that search functionality um, and have a look and try and find um, and find those people who you do want to uh, have a look and, and kind of make that connection with that you'd like to to see your profile. Industry experts can give you a wealth of content that you can share. And again, as I said, we'll come on to kind of what to actually share in those pieces of content um, in a couple of slides time. But to ensure that you always keep up to date with, with what's going on in the insurance industry, again, it's really good to have those connections with those industry experts. There are a number of ways to find those experts. So monitoring any relevant hashtags or, or key terms that have been talking about find and follow those industry organizations associations news outlets um, and see who your connections and other people within the industry are interacting with so if you scroll through your news feed um, if a connection interacts so likes or, or comments or shares on a post it will most likely then appear in your feed so spend a little bit of time scrolling through and seeing what they're interacting with what they're interacting with in a positive way and then create those connections yourself to make sure that you're not missing out on on any of that news or any of those kind of up-to-date pieces but industry experts are a really strong um, kind of connection to make sure that you have just to make sure that you're you're always up to date and again you can start positioning yourselves along alongside those as those kind of thought leaders um, within, within the insurance industry. Once you've found your customers within all the search, um, it's always good to, to then obviously press, press the connect button. Um, LinkedIn will always default to, um, hi, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. This is a way that we'd obviously always suggest not to reach out to those connections. So try and avoid LinkedIn's automated response um, at all costs, if possible. Um, it's quite boring, it's quite predictable, but also the, one of the main things is it's very impersonable. Um, you tend to find that if you get the kind of connections like this, you may be less likely to um, accept those. Um, so make sure there's um, three little dots on the side if you're on your mobile. Um, and you can personalize that um, that connection request. So um, make sure that you get creative with that. Um, and I've got a couple of tips, well, another activity, um, but some tips on making sure that we are reaching out to those, um, to any potential customers in a really clear and succinct way. So for example, and I put um, some a, a, a brief kind of template together, is always start with a bit of an introduction, um, a reason to connect, and then some sort of sales message or conclusion to go with that. So for example, um, I know that it was Bieber last week. So if you met someone at Bieber, if I'd met Vic there, for example, I might then reach out to say, it was great to meet you on your stand last week. Um, I thought our conversation on high net worth clients was really thought provoking, and it'd be really great to connect to continue that conversation. So giving them a reason to connect, giving them a reason sort of why you know them, why you've met them, if you haven't met them in person before, again, you can always have a look at the talks of content that they've been posting. It may be that you say um, something along the lines of, I saw you put a comment or I saw you you um, you posted a blog about X, Y and Z. Um, it was really interesting. I'd love to keep up to date with 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 your your thoughts on the industry. So making sure that you've really taken that time and it only takes a couple of minutes to, to really understand what they're looking, um, what they're about 
why you should connect with them, why they should connect with you. It just puts you in a really good state and kind of stance for that kind of first initial kind of conversation um, that you can then then have with them. So as I said, um, I am going to make this the last activity, I promise. Um, and and have a look. So open, again, open your LinkedIn, um, try and find using those search uh, methods, find somebody that you'd like to make a connection with and then send them that personalized uh, connection request using the, um, the structure that we have here. Um, again, I'll just give you a couple of minutes. I'm conscious on time, so I'll give you a couple of minutes on this one. There is another question in the chat, actually. Okay. Um, from one of our own LinkedIn super super users at Ecclesiastical. Uh, question being, is there a differential um, to the connection requests, whether they're sent via a, a PC or a smartphone? Um, suggestion being smartphones in the past, you couldn't personalise the connection request. So you can now personalise them on a smartphone as well. Um, but yeah, there's there's three dots in the app um, and you can kind of put a bit more of a message in there. But um, again, there's kind of a bit more a bit more space if you do it from a desktop as well. Um, but yeah, it's they've, they've kind of opened that up across all of it. OK, thank you. So we have our all star LinkedIn profile. We are connected to the right people. Uh, but one of the main questions that we always get asked when we're talking about LinkedIn and, and social media in general is, but what do I actually say? So what do I actually post once um, once I've kind of got these connections and I've got my profile? Um, what do I do with it? What do I do with it next? There is a lot of noise on LinkedIn and that can be really hard to get your voice heard. Um, what we need to make sure that we do is create um, pieces of content that really keep your audience engaged and can help build and maintain those relationships. Um, and content and what you post really sits at the heart of that. So what we're going to have a quick look at in, in this section is the types of things you can post, the types of um, information you should be sharing to really help kind of build and maintain that relationship with, with your audience. And like I said right at the beginning is position yourself as that thought leader um, so that as soon as that kind of potential customer um, has a, a need that you can you can help them with, they know exactly kind of who to go with because because you're you're always that kind of front of mind. So your content pieces should always help raise awareness of what you do, make you stand out from the competition, build that loyalty, uh, generate those leads. And as I said, kind of position you as that expert within within your field. Everybody has the power to produce interesting content um, as much as that some people kind of don't don't think they do. You really just need to have the confidence to go for it. So hopefully the tips that we'll give you in this uh, this section will really kind of give you those ideas of, of what you can post um, and what you can start kind of pushing out on on your LinkedIn profiles. So there are lots of different types of content that we can start to have a look at. Um, and all of this content will be stuff that you look at all day, every day anyway. And it's just making sure that we are sharing that with your connections um, to really kind of position yourselves as, as we know what we're talking about. Um, we've got those pieces of information and we really want to share that with you to help solve those problems that, that your uh, potential customers and your connections may have. So we always follow a rule of three when we come to content. Um, the first one is, is looking at owned content. So this is content that's made by you, that could be about you. This could be a picture of a meeting that you go to. Um, it could be any events that you're going to. Um, it's your own thoughts, your own opinions. The second part of that is then your third party content. So this is sharing content that um, you've seen in the industry. So it could be some industry news. It could be an industry blog. Um, and again, making sure that you kind of put that that comment on there. And then the third part of that is your sales content. So if you can get the other two right in that balance between, you can start to put those sales messages within within your content um, to really help kind of push through and kind of generate those leads. So we've put some examples of, of the types of content that you can actually start talking about. And again, this is all stuff that you'll be doing all day, every day anyway. It's just making sure that we are kind of promoting that on your, your LinkedIn profiles. So things like how to guides, FAQs, there are obviously lots of changes to insurance regulations all the time. So making sure that you are kind of posting about those, if that will help and is going to be helpful to you, those potential customers. 
any pictures while you're out and about. Um, so, for example, if you're at Viva, a really great opportunity to start generating that content um, and taking those pictures and sharing those on, on your profiles. Any industry news, company updates. So again, as we said, kind of um, at the beginning, making sure you're always keeping up to date with, with what your company is doing. Um, and also videos, which we'll, we'll come on to uh, in a little bit more detail. But having that kind of rule of three, so looking at content that you've created, sharing other people's content, and then those sales messages as well, um, will really help kind of break that down into, into some kind of manageable posts and manageable pieces of, of content. So there's lots of different types of posts that you can use on, on LinkedIn. Um, all of them have uh, slightly different, different benefits um, and, and different objectives of, of how to use them. So for example, we've got um, a poll up there on, on the um, top row. Um, polls can be used to really gain insight into your audience, gather a second opinion. They're a really good way of starting a conversation. So having those healthy debates, creating engagement on your posts. So ask some questions. Um, put it out there see what people are having what what people think um and then after that poll is closed again that can give you a second post to then say do you agree this is kind of the the results that we've we've had from that image posts we'd always suggest um uh, including an image with any um posts that you do have it can just basically make your post and your uh, your content stand out and, and definitely stand out from from those competition as well so if somebody's scrolling through we want to make them stop and, and look at what you're posting um and encourage that whether or not it's a click through to a website um or kind of that click through to, to connecting with you as well and then there's video and you've probably seen through your LinkedIn feed that video is getting used more and more and more on social. Um, there's a stat at the moment that a post with a video is about five times more likely than any other type of content to start a conversation with users. So busy videos don't have to be a huge kind of production um, shooting something on your phone. So for example, if you're at an event saying kind of having that kind of shooting quick video to say, I'm here, come and visit. This is the stand that we're on. Um, keeping them short and snappy and encouraging those viewers to kind of share posts and have those kind of audiences and create those those connections. Um, but video is a really strong and, and it's, it's only going to grow sort of more and more. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to, to, to snap a quick video on your um, on your phone and, and keep that that sharing. I've put in here as well some really good kind of sources of content. So if you're a bit stuck on on exactly what you should be posting um, or kind of where to get those kind of pieces for, have a look and start to follow um, other. So you've obviously got people like in, like Enthusiastical, so the insurance providers themselves, but also have a look at um, those news industry um, articles, those things like your, your insurance age, insurance business UK, and they will be sharing a wealth of content. What's really good to make sure that you kind of try and do is if you want to share a piece of those content, then make sure that you add a comment to say why you're sharing it. So it could be that Ecclesiastical have shared a really good guide um, and you can then kind of share that with your followers and say, um, I know this will be um, applicable to lots of my connections here. So um, here's a really great guide from Ecclesiastical on flood insurance and or, or, or so whatever that that might be but always kind of adding that comment um, and that piece as to, to why you're sharing it and, and what benefit that could bring to your customers and making sure you're being part of this conversation so LinkedIn is all about kind of managing and, and building and maintaining those uh, connections so joining the conversation as much as possible um what we've got here is the rule that we always go to, through to is which is the the one two three um rule so like comment share so whenever you're having a flick through your your news feed if you can like a post write a comment and then share it as well so as you start to kind of build these conversations and, and build these relationships with your contacts, it really shows that one, you're an active member of, of LinkedIn again, uh, amongst your wider business network, but also that you're sort of really caring and you're understanding um, what sort of um, pieces of content that your, your connections are looking at, what they're sharing, what's important to them and help you kind of build that relationship. So even though it may not be kind of that face-to-face -face meeting, again, it starts to kind of making sure that we are we are building and, and maintaining those connections um, that can hopefully then kind of uh, move on to, to generate those, 
those leads. As we talked about um, doing things like following hashtags that are trending, following posts that, that are trending, joining groups and joining those conversations um, and really making sure that you are you are fully kind of part of those those conversations with within the industry will help to kind of build up your your um, bank of content really that you can start talking about um, and build up those banks of posts that you, that you can start pushing out on on your LinkedIn profiles. So there are different ways and different times that um, are the best times to be posting on LinkedIn. Again, one of the questions that we most commonly get asked is, but how often do I need to be posting and, and when should I be doing it? So we always say the optimal time is it, the optimal um, number of posts is to be looking at sort of between two to four or five posts per week. Um, that may sound like a lot, but actually if you, um, could share sort of one piece of somebody else's content so that third party piece of content and then one piece of your own content every week then again you can quite easily kind of start to start to build up so you'd always say between two to five posts per week um, and also think about when people will be looking um, at LinkedIn so when will they be scrolling so is it that they're scrolling probably not so much uh, at the moment, um, but on their commute uh, while they're sitting on the train, is it they kind of scroll through, is it at lunch times, for example? So always have a think about the time of day that you're posting and also the days of week. So we tend to find that especially in um, a business to business and especially in that broker space, um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are, are particularly kind of good times. You tend to find that people have kind of got into their week and they're starting to have a look through and they generally have a higher number of kind of interactions. So have a think about when you're actually posting um, and, and what time of day and, and what day of the week as well. Oh, we're doing well on time. Mm, very well. Perfect. Um, so obviously, we, I know that I've probably thrown a lot at you today um, and a lots of kind of points in there. But what we wanted to do is just summarise all of this with, with five habits that you can kind of make as part of your day to day to really help make this stick. So it's all very well sort of me saying all of this and then kind of you can go off and do it for a couple of days. But what we really want to make sure is that this now becomes part of your, your sales process, part of that kind of lead generation um, and part of your kind of your way of really growing um, your connections um, and, and hopefully um, kind of generating those new customers and those those new clients. So first, we would always just make this part of your your daily routine. So if you have a mid morning or mid afternoon coffee break, um, take 10 minutes, check your notifications, look out for any mentions or new connections. Try and reach out to a new connection every day as well. So in the same format, so making sure you've kind of got that personal connection. See what's trending on your newsfeed. So make sure you do spend some time scrolling through your newsfeed, seeing what everybody else is talking about. Um, and seeing kind of what what is being um, what what conversations are happening and make sure you do join in on those with that rule of three so they all like comment share so if you can make sure that you kind of like any um, like like at least one post a day if you can just put a quick comment on there and then also making sure that we're sharing that one piece of news but um, kind of always including um, that kind of opinion as to to why you're sharing that as well Think social. So again, kind of making sure that you're thinking social throughout your day. So if you sign up to lots of email newsletters and you've received a great news article that actually you think would be really beneficial, put that one on LinkedIn and, and share that on your on LinkedIn. Take pictures on your way to a meeting or share pictures of any events that you attend and give insight into what your day to day looks like. So um, again, making sure that your personality is, is shining throughout and really making sure that um, your connections kind of get that understanding of, of who you are, how you do business and kind of what you stand for. Um, I wouldn't say sort of posting posting your breakfast every morning, but if there's something that sort of you, your, your company has run a really good seminar or um, there's this uh, event happening within your office, again, just making sure that you're kind of making that personality really shine through, giving insight into to what your day to day really does look like. As we said before, um, ensuring that your source of content is always reputable. So double check the source of any article that you do share and think, does this represent me and my business well? So making sure, and again, as I said, those kind of sources of, of information are a really good place to start. So you wouldn't ever have to worry about that. that. 
but make sure that if the if you are sharing something or sharing a, a third party piece of content um you've always kind of made sure that that it's from a really strong source um and it's nothing that would kind of um kind of go against what what your business um and and you stand for as well Number four is find your own voice and add your own take. So, um, like I said, follow the rule of three, two, one. So your your like and comments and share, and always add why you're sharing a post. So what benefits will your connections get from that post? It doesn't need to be um, a huge paragraph or kind of a really long post within that. But if it is so, like I, as I used that example earlier, so um, something from ecclesiastical. If you think it's going to be really useful to everybody, again, just share that, but say why you're sharing it. So again, it will always just make sure that your connections know um, that, you, that you have their best interest at heart, really, and that you are trying to, to make sure that you um, are kind of doing exactly um, kind of how to help them and, and how to how to look through and, and solve their their problems. And then finally, don't overdo emojis, uh, just in terms of the, the industry that we are in. Um, don't worry too much about those numbers, likes, um, and kind of making sure that you have all of these hashtags in there. The best advice I can always give is just give it a go. Um, like I said, everybody has the ability to create really good content and, and, and have an active LinkedIn um, profile. You just need the confidence just to give it a go um, and kind of make a start, um, try and get it as part of your, your um, daily routine. And you'll quickly find that you are starting to kind of build those really valuable connections um, and help kind of create those that, that lead generation. And I've managed to leave exactly 10 minutes yeah, for any excellent. questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Laura. Very helpful. And uh, please, uh, to, the, to those um, who have joined us today, if you do have any questions, just pop them in the chat. And, uh, and I have the an enviable task of reading them out as the screen moves in front of me, but um, I'll give it a go. Um, but I think there are a few things there for us all to take away, isn't it? That confidence piece is is huge, isn't it? Just getting started. Where do you start? If 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 you're not sure, I think you can probably see from how many people are on LinkedIn that that there must be value in it. And if you're not part of that conversation, then there's there's a possibility that you're missing out. So you've had some practical um, tips today in terms of what to do and how to get started. Um, a plug which you've kindly helped us with there, Laura, but about the ecclesiastical content. You know, we, we write um, and we research a huge amount of uh, content regarding what customers in our niches see as being important to them. So we'll, we'll share our barometer reports, we'll share our insight, we'll share all of those things for our brokers to share with their clients. That's the whole reason we do it. But um, you know, so please do follow Ecclesiastical Insurance UK We've got a campaign on the go at the moment, which is not new, but our movement for good. Um, and that's where charities, people, anybody can nominate a charity for a, a thousand pound grant. Later on in the year, the amounts will increase, but it'll be over a million pound that we'll be giving away this year. That's something that that all of you can uh, like and follow and, and direct to people who you think uh, will have a charity that they want to nominate. So again, it's a way of a way of getting involved. Definitely. I think there's a, there's a wealth of content out on, are there on, on LinkedIn and I think it's just getting into the habit of if you see something that you find really interesting and that you find important again just it, it doesn't take a lot just to kind of click on that that share button um, and, and push that out to, to your audience um, like I said everybody can do it it's just making sure that you kind of get into the into the habit of, of doing it yeah, yeah okay well we haven't got any questions coming through on the chat so oh, yeah. I, th I think that must mean that you've you've covered everything there, Laura. So thank you. And I think possibly people have started to have a look at their LinkedIn profiles and may have got distracted. It's the first time we've <laughs> encouraged people on a webinar to actually look at their phones. But yeah. as I say that, we have just had a question come through. So bear with me a second. So is it, there's a question from Alison. Is there a way to sort LinkedIn content so that the most recent appears first? I often don't see some content until it is days or weeks old. 
Yeah. So the LinkedIn algorithm will try and show you content that you th that it thinks you will be most interested in. So there are ways that you can sort your news feed um, by. Um, I think it's des definitely on on desktop. I think um, there are ways that you can sort of sort it at the top to say um, I want to see the most recent or the most, but it will always default to the most relevant. What you'll tend to find is the the more active you are and the more you start to sort of like and, and comment on things, it will start pushing um, those kind of newer pieces of content because you, you it knows that you've already seen some of that. So um, the more um, you can start interacting with those pieces of content, the more the algorithm will learn kind of what you want to see um, and those pieces. So and then you'll, you'll tend to see some uh, some differences and some um, news kind of different ways that, that LinkedIn start to um, order your newsfeed. But on LinkedIn, I think um, unlike somewhere like Twitter, I think with LinkedIn, um, it's it's perfectly OK to have a look at things that um, have been posted and, and content does tend to hang around. So um, if it is a couple of days old, then again, still kind of make sure that you're, you're interacting with it um, and still sharing with it because it will still be relevant. OK. Thank you, Laura. So if there's no more questions, then all I'm going to say is that we, the, a recording of this will be made available. Um, we'll share that with, with you as the attendees and it will be posted via LinkedIn through the Ecclesiastical Insurance UK um, uh, LinkedIn page as well. So another reason to be following that so as you get access to the recording as soon as it becomes available. But um, yeah, without further ado, thank you very much to Laura and, and Vic from Factor 3. And thank you to our brokers for giving up an hour of your time to, to join us this morning and watch out for the next webinar that we'll be doing in June, which is regarding climate and net zero. So thank you all for joining us today. <laughs>